I've got a quick video here for you today talking about lav mics. In this little case here, I have my Tascam DR-10L, which is by far my favorite lav mic recording solution. These things are incredibly tough, just like built like little tanks. I have dropped this thing so many times and it just keeps on rolling. You can see all the nicks and dings and scars on this thing. This thing's been through battle and it is still working perfectly. The lav mic that's included with this kit, while it sounds great, not quite as tough. And in fact, the one that came with this particular unit fell victim to my cat, London. Now the replacement Tascam lav mic for this unit is about $80, a little bit more than I wanted to spend right now. So I went on the hunt for some budget lav mics. After trying a number of these $30 to $40 mics I found on Amazon and B&H and other places, I discovered one thing. They all pretty much sucked. There were a couple that weren't too bad. The Sony one comes to mind, but I needed something a little bit better than that. It was during my research that I came across a company called Xvibe and their LV-1 lav mic. Cost was around $50. And one really important feature for me is that it has a locking connector, which my Tascam DR-10L has. I love the locking connector. They provide a nice and secure connection so that this thing won't accidentally pop out when I have this on talent. I reached out to the folks at X5 and they agreed to send me one of the LV1s to check out. But my usual disclaimer, all the opinions here I'm going to state are my own and they're not going to see this video ahead of time. Now, I wasn't going to spend the money to buy the Tascam replacement just to review this lav mic. But what I did have was another really solid around $80 choice, which was the Rode Lavalier Go. For $80, it's a really nice sounding mic, but it has the problem of not having a locking connector. But I thought it would be a good mic to do a comparison between it and the X5 LV1. In the little audio tests I'm going to do here, it's going to be in an untreated space, which is sort of the common environment where you would even choose to use a lav mic in the first place. Now these tests aren't going to be crazy comprehensive, just a very basic test to see how the X5 mic sounds compared to the Rode. And now we're recording on the X5 LV1. And I'll pause for a few seconds to give you the room tone. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now we're on the road lavalier go. And I'll pause for a moment for room tone. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now we're recording on the X5 LV1. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now we're on the road lavalier go. It snowed, rained, and hailed the same morning. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. The colt reared and threw the tall rider. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm back in the studio here after listening to those tests. From now on, I'm going to be switching back and forth between the X5 here on my Tascam DR10L and my studio mic up here, the Octava, I believe it's the MK012. Just thought it might be helpful to hear the difference between a, a fairly decent vocal mic 
and this budget lav mic. So after listening to things, and keep in mind, audio can be really subjective, so I can just tell you how I felt things sounded to my ears. So with the Rode, the Rode tends to color the audio a bit, if that makes any sense. It's so that just like right out of the box with no work in post, the, the Rode Lav Go actually sounds pretty good. The X Vive, on the other hand, seems to have a flatter sound, which gives you a little more room in post to EQ, which is something I need because I am always working over my audio in post to a certain extent. So to my ears, the X5 wasn't quite as quiet as the Rode Lavalier Go, but it was pretty close. I will say that I thought the X5 mic had a bit of a fuller sound than the Rode. The Rode sounded just slightly, what's the word for it? I don't want to say tinny because it's not. It's a really good quality mic. It just didn't sound quite as full as the X5 mic did. Maybe a better way to say that is the Rode sounded a little bit thinner compared to the X5. And when I did some EQ to it, I think the X5 really started to pull away from the Rode. Not by a huge margin, but again, to my ears, I really felt the X5 sounded a bit better than the Rode. The build quality of the two mics is fairly identical. The wire and sleeve is pretty much the same. The Rode mic does have a bit better strain relief on the end with the plug. The X5 doesn't really have that very much. Of course, the, the obvious big difference is that the X5 has the locking connector, the Rode does not. The capsules are somewhat similar. The capsule on the X5 is a bit larger than the Rode, which has more of a thin look to it. So where does that leave us here? I have to say to me, this is the best $50 lav mic I've ever used. And in fact, I think it outperformed the Rode Lavalier Go. Again, remember the Rode mic, $80, the X5 LV1, $50. Now, getting back to that locking connector, what if you use something like the Rode Wireless Go? Well, let's grab one. All right, here I've got a first generation uh, Rode Wireless Go, which is, I mean, it's essentially, physically, it's identical to the Wireless Go 2. And if you plug in the X5, it plugs in perfectly. It's fully seated. The locking mechanism kind of backs up out of the way. There is no problem using the LV1 with recording options like the Wireless Go that do not have a locking connector on it. In fact, let's turn on the Wireless Go and make sure we've got a good signal coming through. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Nice solid connection. Now, do keep in mind, we're talking about budget priced lav mics here at the $50 price point. If you've got more money to spend, I'd say around, what, like $150, then I'd look at something like the DDW Lav Pro. If you've got a bit more money, then the Countryman B3 is an excellent choice at around 190-ish. And at the top of the heap, my personal all-time favorite, the Senken Cos 11D, which will set you back anywhere from 350 to 400 bucks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some good information here. If you end up picking up one of these X5 LV1 mics, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I wanna hear what other people's experiences were with it. It worked out so well for me. I'd just like to know how it works for other folks. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.